So we have a writing process that I think we were actually talking today about how this evolved. Um, and I think we're not totally sure, but we've since learned it's unusual, but it really works for us, which is um, we'll each pick up a chapter. We've worked on a table of contents together. Um, we sort of have an outline of the sections of the book and the storyline of the book. And then we'll each pick up a, a chapter. So I'm working on chapter two this week and you're working on chapter eight. At the end of the week or whatever we agree the time period is, we swap. When I get chapter eight from Doug, my only job is to make it better. We don't track changes. If I think, yeah, 90% of this just needs to be thrown out, I throw out 90% of it. I start over. I can move anything around. Um, he's doing the same, by the way, with chapter two. And so as we're working over time, it creates a really unified voice. Um, and it also keeps us totally focused on our only job here is to make it better. So by the time I get chapter two back, I might notice that like he deleted 40% in my favorite story, which was so brilliant. Um, but then I'm just asking the question, well, but is this better actually? And what isn't working now? Maybe I'll bring that story back, but maybe actually he's right. It doesn't fit here. Maybe it goes somewhere else and maybe it never comes back. Um, and then that iterative process means we can't even remember who wrote what lines. Yeah, we're very non-possessive about who wrote what. Um, we're very focused on, is it getting better? Is the book good? And so from my point of view, if Sheila wrote the whole book and everything that I wrote got scrapped, but it's the book that I wanted to write, <laughs> um, <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good book. And, and neither of us is really keeping track. And so... We're both feeling like at the end of the day, we both wrote all of it, and uh, and we both have to like all of it is basically how it works. I think one thing that we learned between the first book and the most recent book, between Difficult Conversations and Thanks for the Feedback, um, is to have a default role, rule that next time you're ready to pick a new piece up, you have to pick the next worst thing. So of all the pieces of the book, which is in the worst shape? It hasn't even yet been drafted. We need a first draft. It's a mess. Um, it really needs to be resorted in this section because some of this stuff doesn't even belong in this chapter. And our rule was when we have the energy, you pick up the next worst thing. It meant that we avoided a mistake that I think we made with our first book and that's so easy emotionally to make, which is you polish and polish and polish and polish all of the best stuff, the opening first section of the book. Um, because it's so much more fun to work on something that mostly works and that you're just tweaking to make a little bit better. That's a really fun day um, as a writer. And you're putting off and procrastinating the stuff that is actually emotionally the hardest to do. And so then you end up with a book that's like, this is mostly done and this is like a total mess. Um, and we didn't do that on our second book, make that mistake. <laughs> well, an another aspect of our process is that, I, I don't know how other people do it exactly, but we sort of don't keep track of how many times we've gone through a chapter because it's so many times. So, and you know, it's like 40, 40. Iterations. Yeah. And some of the chapters, look, we have whole chapters that are written and then the next version of it will be completely different. And so we're just sort of trying, seeing what works, seeing what works, trying to make it better. We'll sort of write something, we'll work on it. We'll think it's a pretty good, getting better, edit it, edit. And then someone, one, you know, the other person will come in and say, yeah, this is this really isn't. We have to face up to the fact that this one doesn't work yet, and so we'll just start over. Yeah. Um, so it's just this endless thing. But I think a lot of it is based on just this underlying um, respect that we have for each other in terms of the other person's abilities and what they bring to it, and their and their intentions around making it as good as it can be. If I think if we didn't have that, it would. It's always it's always a little scary sending. A chapter to the other person because you never know. Specifically, yeah. sending it to you, you <laughs> but you send it. You never know what you're going to get back, right? You might get back an email that says this I is great, it. this is amazing, or just an email that says yeah, this doesn't work. Um, but it's a lot. It's it's helped along greatly by the fact that I feel like whatever I get back from Sheila, it's going to be coming from a person who's thinking on the topic I respect and who I also know that her only goal is to make it better. Mm -hmm. So there's no other agenda, really. We do have these funny conversations um, in the final stages. So this last, with this last book, we're in the very, very final line edits. 
um, and passing things back and forth. And I kept taking out a final sentence in this one paragraph, which was a, a little joke at the end. Um, no, sorry, you kept taking it out, and I kept putting it back in. Right. It was and a then joke. Wasn't he would funny. take it, it wasn't out, a funny joke. and I would put it back in. And um, so finally, you called and said, okay, we got to talk about this squirrel, this squirrel sentence. And um, I said, I know, I keep putting it back in, because I remember when you wrote it, because I was, I was working in the library, I'm reading your draft months ago, and I laughed out loud. And... Um, so I miss it. When it's gone, I miss it because it surprised me in the original text and I um, still laugh. And you were like, I didn't write that, you did. <laughs> I was like, no, I couldn't have written it because I remember being surprised by it. So we still don't agree actually on who wrote that. And what's interesting is we decided to leave it in. So I got my way. And then for the paperback, I decided that you were right and we took it out. <laughs> <laughs> Let that be a lesson. Yeah, exactly. So when you're co-authoring something and you're spending, you know, all of your waking hours thinking about it and you're working with one person so intensively, tiny little things can, like, you're driving each other crazy with. Um, and so there was uh, a habit that Doug had that was totally unconscious, which is he'd finish a sentence and he'd be th sitting at his computer thinking, now notice that I, like, snuck into his office and just watched behind him to see how was this happening. Um, and he'd be thinking, so he would finish the sentence, period, space, space. And then when he started another sentence, it'd be like, space, 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 and then start typing. So it was like a running start. So what this meant is that I would get a draft, and every single sentence in the 40-page draft would have anywhere between two and seven spaces between every sentence. And then I would spend like an hour as I'm reading, taking out spaces, and, and that's so she'll, fine. So she'll sends me an email, and we're both like under intense pressure to, to get this book done, and <laughs> wondering like, is it going anywhere? Are we going to be able to do it? And she sends me an email in the middle of that that says, "By the way, um, you're doing this weird thing with the spacing, and it's bothering me. So can you stop?" And within two seconds, I'd written back an email that said, "This is your problem, not my problem." <laughs> And I was adamant, and I was, and then. First, no, first you were like, "This is your problem," and anyway, I don't do that. Yeah, well, both. Um, but I was thinking, like, oh my god, of all the things that we have to figure out with this book, this yeah. is going to be like the big priority. Petty problem. Um, but then I started noticing it, and then it became like, then I became obsessed with it. Thank you for listening. Please review our other available content for help writing, publishing, and marketing your book. If you have any questions about the Author Learning Center, please contact us by email at authorsupport at authorlearningcenter.com.